All right, so now we are on to 6.3 with trig, trig uh, functions of angles. All right, um, you got a picture of a hand, and the reason we got a picture of a hand is we can find out exact values of trig functions in between 0 and 90 degrees by using a hand, and on top of that, we can find exact values of numbers that aren't even between 0 and 90 degrees if we get them to fit on the hand. So this is the Marzak hand rule. Um, it is the left hand rule. Uh, you got to use your left hand in order to do it, which is why I have a picture of this. And write this down, print this out. This will be a huge help. Every kid I ever run into who tries to remember this stuff to find exact values with trig, they keep coming back to this because it works out so well. Okay, so point being, you're doing it. Use the left hand rule, the Marzog left hand rule for trig. When I grow up, I'm going to... So remember trig values. First, way, hold up your left hand when we're doing this. The pinky finger is your zero degree finger. The ring finger is your 30 degree finger. Your middle finger is your 45 degree finger. Your pointer finger is your 60 degree finger. And your thumb is your 90 degree finger got to also remember them in terms of radians because sometimes radians will be shown instead. Okay, so 0 and 0, that's easy enough. 30 degrees, remember that's pi over 6. 45 degrees, that's pi over 4. 60 degrees, that's pi over 3. And 90 degrees is pi over 2. So remember those fingers. Remember those degrees. Remember those radians. Remember that hand. Okay, because this will come in handy. Sign, to find sign of one of those given angles. To find sign of one of those given angles, it is everything to the left. Okay, remember that. Everything to the left, and I'll get to how you do this in a minute. It's everything to the left. Cosine is everything to the right. Sine, everything to the left. Cosine is everything to the right. And this is just like a little cheat sheet for you, and we'll go over a couple examples so you can see exactly how it works in a minute. But remember, sine is everything to the left. Cosine is everything to the right. And it's all over 2. So... It is the square root of the top divided by 2. So it is the square root of the top divided by 2. So by that I mean if I said to you, um, what's sine of 30 degrees? You would put your ring finger down because that's your 30 degree finger. So sine is everything to the left. So here's what I want you to do. Do this problem with me. Sine of 30 degrees. Put your ring finger down. Sine is everything to the left. So how many fingers to the left that you put down? You put your ring finger down, so there's just one finger to your left. So that means that it is the square root of 1 over 2. Well, the square root of 1 is just 1. So it's 1 over 2. So the sine of 30 degrees is 1 over 2, or 1 half. If you don't believe me, type it in your calculator. Sine of 30 degrees, 1 over 2. Just type it on it. Tangent, however, you can even do to solve this. You can do the tangent, very simply put, by doing the square root of whatever the left fingers were down over the square root of the right. So the tangent of 30 degrees, for example, would be, you put your 30 degree finger down, or your um, ring finger down, it would be all the fingers to the left, there's 1. So it would be the square root of 1 over all the fingers to your right, which are 3. So square root of 3, so it would be 1 over root 3. You can't have a square root on the bottom, so you multiply it by root 3 on the top and the bottom to get root 3 over 3 as your exact answer. Where's my burrito? Where's my burrito? Next one. Write this one down because this will help you remember where sine, cosine, and tangent are positive on the unit circle. So you need to have this graphic organizer as well. And once you have this implanted into your brain, then this will also be a huge help. That's quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4 of the unit circle. Okay. In quadrant 1, write down that everything is positive. So anything between 0 and 90 degrees is positive. Sine's positive, cosine's positive, tangent's positive, cosecant's positive, secant's positive, and uh, cotangent's are all positive. In quadrant two, only sine and cosecant are positive. Everything else is negative. That means cosine's negative, secant's negative. That means tangent's negative and cotangent's negative in that quadrant. So, for example, 
120 degrees is in this quadrant. 150 degrees is in this quadrant. That means if you were to find the sine of 150, the answer would be positive. But if you were supposed to find the cosine of 150, the answer is going to be negative. Down here, only tangent and cotangent are positive. That means sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant, they're all negative in quadrant 3. So what does that mean? That means if I was to put something down in here like... Um, uh, 200. If I said find sine of 200, sine would be negative. If I said find tangent of 200, that would be positive. So you will know your answer is going to be. And in quadrant 4, cosine and secant are positive. But everything else is negative. And by that, I mean tangents negative, cotangents negative, sines negative, cosine is negative, or uh, sine is negative, and cosecant is negative in here. So if I said find, because 300 would be in here, if I said find the cosine of 300 degrees, it'd be positive. But if I said find the sine of 300 degrees, it'd be negative. So how do you remember that? All students take calculus, uh -huh, right? All for all, everything. S for sine, right, students. T for tangent, take. C, cosine, calculus. All students take calculus. Everything is positive. Sine and cosecant are positive. Tangent and cotangent are positive. Um, cosine and secant are positive. So that's how you can remember all of those in those quadrants. Personally, I like to remember apple, soda, toga, cow. Apple, soda, toga, cow. All or apple, whatever you want. Um, students or soda, uh, take or toga, and calc and cal. I like apple soda toga cal. That works just as well. But either way, it's a little trick there. A mnemonic device, if you will, in order to remember um, what areas um, in what quadrants um, of a unit circle things are positive. Okay? I've coughed up scarier stuff than that. So, don't want to get into any more details. That's just the background of those notes. I'm going to do a bunch of examples, and when we come back here, I'm going to do all those examples with you. So, have those cheat sheets out. Have them ready to go. Have the Marzoc left hand rule uh, paper out and ready to go. Have that unit circle paper out ready to go. And yes, at first, you're going to look at it and go, oh, this is so tough. You're looking at both those, trying to do it. Trust me. We're going to do so many problems that that hand, you can put the hand in front of your face, put a finger down, and boom, you can figure it out. Then all you have to do is remember what quadrant it is in. That's all you have to do. So if I said find the sine of, you know, 30 degrees, it's like, boom, you know what finger to put down. And then from there, you can say, well, it's in quadrant one. Everything is positive, so my answer is going to be positive there. Okay? And we'll get into reference angles and how to find those so you can see um, what finger you're supposed to put down to make this even easier then. And it does take some time, but like I said, if you memorize these things, if you know how to use them, it makes solving this stuff so much easier. Otherwise, you're going to have a bunch of math to do. I'm saving you from doing math is basically what I'm doing. So we'll go over this problem uh, when we come back.